We look back now on 2022 through the lenses of photojournalists. It was a year marked by the war in Ukraine, devastating natural disasters, American gun violence, and deep political divisions. Four photographers spoke with us about the events they witnessed and how they captured them. And a warning, some of the images in this story are graphic. It's all part of our Arts and Culture series, Canvas. My name is Carolyn Cole. I'm a staff photographer with the Los Angeles Times, and this year I covered the Ukraine war. My name is Marco Bello, and I'm a freelance photographer based in Miami, Florida. I'm from Venezuela. The biggest stories I worked this year were the school shooting in Uvalde and the hurricane season. I'm Anna Moneymaker. I'm a Getty Images staff photographer based in Washington, D.C. And this year, one of the main things I covered was the overturning of Roe v. Wade. I'm Felipe Dana. I'm a photographer for the Associated Press, currently covering the war in Ukraine in Kiev right now. I think we were very surprised by how quickly everything escalated. At the beginning of the war, it was really impressive how many civilians fleeing. Uh, you know, every day we witness hundreds if not thousands of civilians going through a bridge that was was destroyed to stop the advance of, of Russian forces. And one day I was able to go in an embed uh, with a Ukrainian military drone unit. And this building, it was like barely standing because it was just so intense. I saw horrific things and uh, I tried to show them as respectfully as I can, but also uh, not to hide the reality of what's happening. But, but of course, it takes some toll on you. And after several months that you're working nonstop, it gets on you. And, and especially when I get home and I go rest a little bit, it takes a while to regenerate. I've been a photojournalist in D.C. since I graduated from college in 2018. No week's the same. And the month of June was a lot of Supreme Court. The leak came around like beginning of May. So they put, you know, barriers around the court. They put fencing around the court. The day the decision was announced, it did feel different. Protesters were, some of them were starting to cry, some of them were starting to shout, or they were just stunned. So getting all of those pictures, I found, was really important. Someone once told me D.C. is a city of inches. It's just like one inch away, you could get another picture. I feel like I'm being a witness to, you know, like the first draft of history being written growing up. That's the whole reason I got into photography and covering politics. I think it was an important year, as any year is, to be present and keep our eyes open and cover every side of the story, which I think we've all done. I was covering the border, waiting for migrants and the border patrol and everything. And one of my editors called me and he told me, you know, there's something weird happening in a town called Uvalde. I was super lucky because I was almost the first one at the scene. So I took a few photos of, of the kids getting on the bus. I started to learn to hear people talking and crying, okay, something happened. But I didn't know until a few hours later, the war was eager to have visuals of the whole situation. I have 10 years old daughter, so I can relate with it tragedy with the parents you have to connect with the people that's what i don't like the long lenses there is too much distance to create a connection you don't have to even to talk just eye contacts you say a lot of things and i let them know how bad i feel with the hurricanes, everything is changing as, as the hurricane approaches. I was in Fort Myer Beach less than 12 hours before the hurricane hit. And the next time I saw that, Fort Myer Beach was almost erased from the earth. How powerful is the nature to create this gray of destruction? It's about looking for images that will help people relate to the people of Ukraine and what's happening in their country. A major part of this story has been evacuations and whether or not people are going to leave their homes. I saw this one elderly woman and just love the reflection in the windows of, of the town that's probably all that she's ever known. And now she's going to be leaving that town. And then 
you know, some of the children that have made quick friends on the bus. It's really impressive to see how defiant the people are in Ukraine um, under the conditions that they're living. I've seen daily funerals for soldiers who have died in conflict. And every time people will stop what they're doing, um, either put their hands across their heart or in some cases kneel on the ground as the casket is passing. And it's just a very moving and emotional scene. I think it's important for American photojournalists, um, myself in particular, to cover those countries where the U.S. is involved. And the American government is highly involved in this war in Ukraine. So we need to understand what's happening there. And I've already heard that people are getting exhausted from the war and that it becomes, you know, back page news. Um, and it just shouldn't be. You know, the, the point of these images is to try to keep reminding people this is still going on. People are still suffering from this and their stories deserve to be heard. Thank you so much to these four photojournalists for sharing their thoughts with us. Just so powerful, these images.